Hey everybody, so <clears throat> what have we been up to here at Next Generation Rail Solutions? Well, a lot of welding, some engineering work, but that's a different video. What have we been welding on? Well, the wheels for the LNN 152. The locomotive was built in 1907, and you know, casting technology was a little bit different back then. You know, it, it was a little less advanced. I mean, steel was a relatively new thing. So there's a number of cracks in these wheels. So far, we've repaired over two dozen cracks in the wheels um, quite successfully. And the grooves for the welds have had to be really large. So like, take a look at this. This is, this is one of the larger cracks and, and don't worry about the tire. The tires are getting replaced. Um, and one, that, that still has to be back gouged and welded out the rest of the way from the backside once the tire is off. Here's, a, here's another one. This took four days to weld up. It was, it was a, lot of, a lot of welding rod. This one had actually been a braze repair that looked really nice and would have been fine if it hadn't separated off of one side of the rim. And that's an interesting little factoidal thing. So some locomotives were built with segmented rims. Like every other spoke, there'd be a little gap with a filler piece in there. And when you put the tire on and everything shrunk, it just holds everything together. That's okay. If it's a contiguous cast uh, rim and there's a crack, you have to repair it, even though it's basically a segmented rim at that point. But I digress. So <clears throat> why are the cracks there? Well, like I said, very primitive, generally speaking, steel casting technology and processes back in the day. And the, um, you, know, you had some irregularities that would show up. So every place there was a crack in these wheels, once we started grinding the crack out, the metal was very gray and powdery in some instances. And even if it looked more like steel than, than not, it still went away really quickly compared to the, the better material once you got out to it. So I have a little visual aid. It's a sponge. Sponge has lots of pockets, right? Well, if you imagine the steel is the sponge material and the pockets are carbon, down on like a microscopic level, that's kind of what you're getting. So, sponge be gone. So, the, um, there were some areas where you actually had pockets of very dark gray material that came out as a powder. Others, the whole, the whole section of the material was gray, like cast iron. So basically what you have, and I've seen this before, only in the opposite direction, you end up with what's effectively pockets of cast iron in the steel because you have concentrations of carbon and that's one of the only differences between steel and cast iron is the percentage of carbon, right? So, show you this, put in earplugs, because it's loud. Uh, and stand by folks, I'm gonna grab my gloves. So, what does that actually look like? Well, I'll show you. So come in here really close. And what you're actually seeing are these carbon pockets I was talking about in the steel. So those are extraordinarily pronounced. Not all of them are that way, but that's a great visual example of the sorts of defects that are in these wheel centers. So they'll be finished. Uh, they'll be finished this year, and uh, we've we've got the engineering going on the boiler. Like I said, that's a completely separate video, which we will do in the future. And uh, at some point, we'll have a kind of tour through everything that's been uh, done to the wheels. Once they're finished and, and other things to look forward to, you'd better believe we'll do a video, probably a time lapse of, of taking the tires off, uh, along with other things associated with that work. So 
Hope everyone's doing great. Stay tuned for more work on the Kentucky Railway Museum's LNN number 152.